Welcome back. I want to begin by saying that drawing these presidential candidates in no way implies any endorsement in one way or another. Um, uh, I will say that drawing uh, Biden will give us an opportunity to study the effects of age on the human head. Um, we're going to begin with President Biden's cranium. Uh, interestingly, uh, we can see his cranium is, is not as elongated as a typical human cranium. You see how it's, it's really, uh, it's really from the side a circle, which is not, it's not what we typically find, right? It's like, usually the cranium is substantially deeper than it is tall. Um, well, I guess I'm not really being fair. Let's see. The bottom of his cranium is probably about here. So we'll say it is a little bit, it's a little wider than it is tall. Um, so we'll, we'll start with the normal shape. Um, I was kind of reading the bottom of his cranium a little bit, um, lower than it actually is. And part of, what, one thing that threw me off is the length of his ear. Um, as I've probably told you before, or you may have heard, um, ears uh, continue to grow throughout the entire lifespan. So um, you can count on your ears uh, getting slightly larger for every year that you're alive. And because of Biden's age, again, um, his ear is very long. So it's, it's partly what gave me an impression of a round cranium. Um, we're going to mark his brow ridge centered on the cranium side and his ear hole near the bottom. Uh, his tragus is kind of pointing towards us, so we can actually see right into Biden's ear hole. Um, Let's take a few measurements. Um, we've got the top of the head here, brow ridge here, and the bottom of the cranium here. So he actually does have an unusual, look how tall his cranium is, right? From here to here is quite a bit larger than this unit, um, but these two units are indeed the same. You see that? So that is the other reason I had a really an impression of a round cranium is this cranium really comes up high towards the back. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make, make sure this is plenty big. I might just lower the brow ridge a little to shrink this unit. We wanna give an effect that this unit is quite a bit bigger than this one. And then we're going to make these two the same. So the line of the face is going to come down to here. And remember, there's a big difference between drawing a generic person and a particular person. Portraiture is about capturing particularities. Um, memorizing the basic forms is about memorizing generalities, like averages really different and if you if you tweak your portrait in the direction of being more average than the person is uh, you'll make an attractive portrait but it won't look like the person that's something you always see if you get your portrait drawn in a tourist trap like uh, Montmartre in Paris you'll go around and like you'll notice that all the portraits look pretty attractive like people are sometimes happy with them it's like oh you made me look great but they don't look much like the people so again I'm gonna check your work for the main thing I are looking for is like look this unit has to be bigger than this one um, now we've got the indent under the brow ridge and his nose has a clear direction change. Um, see it? It's like we're going to go from that indent to here. 
and then we're going to change direction and we're going to down to the tip and these angles are slightly different this one's closer to like 45 and this one is steeper you see that so we're going to block that in with this angle which is almost 45 and this angle which is a steeper angle Um, this kind of nose is sometimes misleadingly called like a, a hook nose. Um, it doesn't really look like a hook, but that's a term that you sometimes hear. Um, now we're going to look at the little radius of the tip of Biden's nose to try to get the, make it the right amount of roundness. Um, it's, it's a relatively pointy nose, so we're going to make it a small radius and we're gonna drop a construction line down from the brow ridge straight down and you can see that his philtrum is all the way back at the line of the face and that is partly what gives him a kind of aged look because he still has his front teeth, but you notice how his um, his upper lip is receding behind his bottom lip, and that is typical of somebody who's actually lost their front teeth. So it par partly makes him look older than he is. Um, his mouth is right where we expect to find it, which is. Well, let me check. So this is about one third of the way down and then this is two thirds. So see what's happening. That's just what we expect. So let's mark a third of the way down. Um, his upper lip is virtually non-existent. So for those of you who are in the habit of drawing fish lips, like you see how there's really no projection outward of the upper lip and there's barely even an undercut. And his line between his lips is straight, goes down slightly, and then down again towards the outside corner. And then he's got this projecting bottom lip Here's another angle we can assess, which is about, about, I would say, 50 degrees. And here's an angle that's slightly steeper. So we're gonna change direction at the top of the chin and then like that. Um, the nostril is perched right above the philtrum, which is where we usually look for it. And it turns, the top of the nostril turns into the bottom of the ala, right behind the line of the face. And then the top of the ala is way up here, about halfway between the bottom of the ala and the, and the line of the nose. You see that? Fractional thinking again. It's even a little above halfway. And the very back of the ala is overlapped by the cheek slightly. So we're gonna draw a little hint of a frontal curve of the cheek. Um, I'm gonna check my facial angle and it's looking to me like on my drawing, I I made the chin stick out a little too far. You can check yours. You know, check this angle. Um, and make sure that your chin is staying behind that line. Behind a line drawn at that angle. I just fixed mine. Okay. Um, let's go ahead with the 
with the eye. Now, some of you are in the habit of making eyes way too big. Um, take a careful look at just what we're seeing here for this eye. It's like, look at, compare the size of the eye to like the size of the nostril. You see how much smaller it is? So we know that the eye has to be below this indentation. So we know the eye level's about here. And lately, the way I've been teaching this is I've been looking for a parallel construction um, on Biden. If we go right from this plane change here and we run roughly parallel to the, to the line of the nose, that's going to help us find where that back corner of the eye belongs. And then notice that this eye really doesn't fill much of this space. It's like really small compared to his nose. And also notice there's no visible eyelid. Um, and his eyebrow is kind of hanging down near his... Uh, near his eye. Okay. So let's not, um, it's tempting for me to assess my work now. I keep feeling like the chin, giving him too much chin. Okay, so this is sort of his jawline. Let's do a little shading to indicate this soft plane change under the skin. And make sure this is angling up and ending in front of the ear hole. Don't bring the jaw behind the ear hole. Some people have been doing that. Not a good look. And notice that We've talked about how extremely overweight people, um, if I can still say that, um, are, they have a lot more flesh under their jaws than people who are very thin. Uh, Biden's not overweight, but his age has caused this skin to loosen under his chin. So it's sagging. Can you see that? So. We're really not going to follow the jawline at all. Instead, we're really going to, we're heading, you know, down at about a 45 degree angle and kind of curving slightly. And the reason that we can do that without making him look like he's extremely overweight is that we're going to shade this little crease in here, which is going to make it clear that it's just kind of saggy skin and not like uh not filled with fat. It's like a deflated balloon. Okay, I'm de I'm definitely going to be promoting this heavily on my channel because I think there's there's going to be a lot of demand for that. A lot of a lot of people want to draw Biden probably. Um. Okay, let's take a, let's back up a little, see how we're doing. Okay, this is going to be really good ear practice, again, because his ear is so big. Um, look at where the bottom of his ear lands. Bottom of his ear lands at the bottom of his philtrum. Um... I mean, I'm sorry, the middle of his philtrum. Top of his ear lands above his eyebrow. So the ear is much larger than we're used to seeing. And the angle of the ear is roughly parallel to the angle of the nose. You see that? It's like, so we're gonna, we're gonna draw the top, the bottom, the angle, 
And only then are we gonna sketch the outline of the ear. Before you draw something, you really need to take a few measurements and make up your mind like where it needs to go. And you're gonna have a hard time drawing it big enough because you've learned how big ears are and you're not used to seeing them this big. But th this is what happens as we age. The ear is made of cartilage. Like, and like the nose, it just keeps growing as long as you live. Um, here's that little tiny tragus. Doesn't even cover the ear hole. Here's the anti-tragus. The helix starts way up here above the ear hole. There's the ear hole. The helix starts here, and it takes some unusual turns. You see that? It like goes up, and then it's a little bit kind of crushed in right here. And then it has another kind of weird little bump right here. And then the, it, the crease fades out all the way down to the earlobe. So what we're really seeing is, is we're seeing variations on forms that have become familiar to us. But the fact that they're familiar allows us to appreciate and capture the variations in a way that we would not be able to do if we hadn't already learned the forms. So here's the anti-helix. Starts behind the helix. And there's Biden's ear. Now, one of the effects of age is there's a little bit of a pouch under the eye, so we're going to throw that in. And let's back out a little bit again and see how we're doing. I feel like we're going to, I'm going to need to make a few edits on mine. Hopefully, some of you are doing better. Um, if you want, we could we could throw a few student drawings into the video this time. If you, if anyone wants to make their work public, might be funny. It might be funny at least. Okay, so here's the actual shape of his head. Look, it kind of peaks high towards the back, and then it really comes like virtually straight down. Um, and he's got a couple neck creases here. Make sure you slope that collar. Look, it comes down in the front and way high up in the back. And look at how the collar actually is containing his flesh. Like, you see how, it, like, there's the collar, and then the skin's kind of, like, erupting over the edge of the collar there. Um, but you see how that, st it starts to look more like him with the hair and the sh head shape. Okay, so I'm at a stage now where I need to think about making some corrections. Um, and I want you to watch this process because it's important to understand that artists often don't get a likeness right away. Um, I don't think I have a likeness here. So what I'm gonna try first, it feels to me like I could put the eye a little bit higher and you might be seeing different different corrections in your drawing and by a little bit I mean about an eighth of an inch higher like to there and I'm gonna try making the philtrum just a little further forward feels like it's maybe a little too far back by the time you're finished listening to this Pepsi Zero Sugar you'll be 15 seconds closer to kickoff 
And because game day is so close, you can almost taste it. Football watching better with Pepsi. Um, I don't know. I might need your help. Uh, yeah, Muhammad, tell me. Uh, <laughs> now, with my drawing, tell me, like, where do you think my drawing is failing the worst? Like, wh what part doesn't look like Biden? <laughs> the back head? No, I, I think that's pretty good. Did I give him too much of a hook nose? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, let's... Oh, and actually the indent above his nose a little doesn't go back quite as far. So I'm, I'm going to just straighten this line out a little. Yeah, that looks a little better. What do you think? Would you recognize that as Biden? Uh, we need to add more wrinkles. He's got these creases at his outside corner of his eye. And he also has some forehead creases. We should, we could send the president a link to this video. Um, we've got a little shading to do under the cheekbone here. Um, and his chin even cuts back a little further. It's sort of a, it's sort of what you would call a kind of a weak chin. Uh, that's a little better, isn't it? Um, I would really love to put some of your drawings in this video, you guys, if you... I'm going to give you a minute to... Let's see. Some Somebody had to have done better than me today. Come on. Um, okay, I'm going to pause the video, and I'm going to come around and look, give you a minute to finish these. And as promised, uh, we're now going to share student work with my massive subscriber base and maybe who knows maybe with president biden himself who might be watching right now no. so no, so mr president uh if you want to know how your constituents see you um here's a little si here's a little sampling that's very good um, when you consider that this is an intro class, you look at the quality of, of the work here. Yeah. So the large ear on this one makes it verge on caricature, I think. Wow, look at that. So impressive. <laughs> Okay. And once again, um, the reason we do the reason we do celebrities is because um, we can recognize them. It's great practice. Um, you can show it to other people, and if if they say, "Oh, that's the president," then you know you've uh, succeeded. So, uh, thanks as always for watching, and we'll see you next time.